Good afternoon. I'm William Porter McRoberts, MD. I'm talking to you today, Chapter 3, Neuromodulation University. I'm trying to teach you everything there is to know about neuromodulation, the good, the bad, and the ugly, why you should do it. And today I'm going to talk about peripheral nerve stimulation specifically. I'm doing these series so that my patients and others can learn everything that they can about spinal cord stimulation, peripheral nerve stimulation, and so they can further educate themselves about the practice, how it's performed, what the risks are, what the benefits are, so they can make great decisions whether they should go ahead or not with neuromodulation. Today is peripheral nerve stimulation. Peripheral nerve stimulation has been around for even longer than spinal cord stimulation. It involves taking an electrode uh, or a wire, putting it next to a nerve, and then pulsing it rapidly on and off, and thus confusing the nerve and thus stopping it from reporting pain. The most important thing about peripheral nerve stimulation is to know that it is, uh, it's not in the spine. It's uh, performed on the peripheral nerve. It was performed first in about 1967. Uh, despite that, there are only a few products which are FDA approved. Most are not FDA approved. We simply take spinal cord stimulation leads and use them in this way. Uh, but it involves cutting down to the nerve or using a small needle and placing uh, a lead next to a nerve and then turning on the, uh, the pulsations to uh, try and block the pain from ascending the nerve. How does it work? Um, we don't really know how it works. Uh, despite all the research that we've done and all the ideas, we think that what happens is it sends a competitive signal up the nerve uh, to arrive at the spinal cord and then outcompete the signal of pain so that you essentially stop feeling pain within the distribution of that nerve. So say you had pain in your hand in the, uh, the carpal tunnel distribution, the first few fingers, uh, you would stimulate the median nerve at the wrist, put a little stimulator in there right underneath the wrist and then uh, turn it on. It can be used for pretty much any kind of injury, um, but it works best on injuries to the nerve and injuries to uh, the body that produce nerve pain, such as peripheral neuropathy, um, uh, injuries secondary to surgery, chronic regional pain syndrome, these kinds of things. Um, and so that's how it works best. The, the risks are different than spinal cord stimulation. And, uh, probably much less risky than spinal cord stimulation. Not that spinal cord stimulation is tremendously risky, but if you have a bleed uh, within your spinal canal, it can compress your spinal cord, and that can, uh, that can lead to, to big time problems if not caught early. Luckily, that is a rare event, but in the periphery, say in an arm or a leg, or the face, the head, if you have a bleed, you simply have a bleed, and uh, you're gonna lose a little blood, and then it's gonna stop bleeding. It's not a major event. So overall, it's, it's less risky. It's also more useful uh, in cases where the nerve is injured uh, in the periphery, such as from a surgery, a cut nerve, uh, say from a hernia surgery or a, a bad foot surgery or bad hand or arm surgery, shoulder surgery. And so uh, you can target specifically that nerve. It's shown to be more effective actually in, in complex regional pain syndromes from an injured nerve, uh, say a surgical injury, uh, than spinal cord stimulation. Also, uh, you can put the, uh, the wires in the periphery, such as the uh, arms or legs, and then also you have to put the implantable pulse generator, the little uh, uh, unit that sends the stimulation to the nerve also uh, away from the, the spine. It doesn't have to be put in the spine. There's essentially two types, uh, maybe even three types of uh, peripheral nerve stimulation. The first is direct to the nerve uh, stimulation, which is where you put the lead right on the nerve. The second is something called peripheral field stimulation, which is a non-FDA approved approach, but uh, arguably extremely safe. There's quite a bit of literature and research around it, which is quite positive. Uh, but this is where you place the lead right under the skin in the painful area, and then send the electricity through the skin of the painful area and down along the nerves of the painful area. And then lastly is uh, placement of, uh, of an electrode in the periphery next to the dorsal root ganglion which some would argue is also spinal cord stimulation, some would order, argue is also peripheral nerve stimulation. This is kind of where it gets murky and there may be no ap absolute uh, definition. But in other words, those are the three main approaches to peripheral nerve stimulation. I already described the direct to the nerve. The other peripheral field uh, stimulation involves, again, just sticking the needle right under the skin um, and turning on the stimulation. It's uh, very simple, very easy, very, very low risk. 
Um, there's some argument that it may be less efficacious over time, uh, but nevertheless, it's also uh, uh, capable of steering uh, the pain relieving what we call paresthesia or buzzing uh, into the periphery and sometimes very hard to reach places such as the mid back, the back of the neck, uh, there are thoracic chest wall posteriorly or areas that's difficult to cover, say in the skin of the arm or leg or back of the buttock or side of the thigh. These are all places that we put leads in. In fact, we can place them anywhere and even in the face, the, the head, the neck, etc. This is essentially the, uh, the aim of peripheral nerve stimulation is to apply stimulation to the nerves outside the spinal canal. And uh, it's not difficult to do, but there are very few people who uh, focus their careers and uh, their practices at it. There's probably a good uh, hundred uh, U.S. Uh, physicians and maybe about another hundred uh, physicians outside the U.S. who um, do it on a regular basis. That said, it can be very, very efficacious and there's situations where spinal cord stimulation doesn't work and peripheral nerve stimulation really works much, much better. There are quite a few innovations coming. We don't know um, what, say, pulse, uh, uh, high pulse trains will do to the peripheral nerves, such as uh, burst stimulation or high frequency stimulation. There is some research on cuff electrodes using ultra high frequency stimulation, where we essentially block all sensation within the nerve, essentially generating paresthesia or anesthesia within the nerve. But that's still on the drawing boards. We don't really know how that's going to work, but we're, we're hopeful. If you uh, if you're further interested, there's a lot of uh, information to be found on the internet, especially reading medical journals. That about sums up peripheral nerve stimulation. Uh, please uh, look at the rest of our videos on Neuromodulation University. Again, trying to educate you on everything we do in neuromodulation. I myself practice in South Florida and Fort Lauderdale. And you can, of course, go to our website at International House of Pain for further information, testimonials, and videos explaining how and why we do what we do. I hope this helps. Thank you.